does Deshaun Jackson's injury mean for Travis Fulgham and Alshon Jeffrey? Which Austin Eckler replacement is the correct running back to start in Week 7? And is Gronk's resurgence enough to play him over Jared Cook on Sunday? Plus, the second-place team owners in the FFPC main event, Ski Laskowski and Barney Newkirk, join us to talk C.D. Lamb, the Steelers' backfield, and much more. We've got a great show for you. Farrell Elliott is here. I'm Eric Balkman. Stick around. Your high-stakes fantasy football hour starts now. Broadcast live and heard around the world, you are now listening to the most entertaining hour of radio on the planet. Welcome to the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour, presented by MyFFPC.com, with your hosts, Eric Balkman and Farrell Elliott. The High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour is your home for analysis from the best players in the world. And now, because no one else was available, here's Eric Balkman and Farrell Elliott. The quiet hollers, ladies and gentlemen, providing the music on tonight's show. Check their music out at quiethollers.com. Of course, thank you to Rob. Greetings and salutations to all the Balkaholics and Ferreliacs in the chat room right now and listening around the world. Welcome to the latest episode of the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour presented by myffpc.com. I am, of course, your slightly above average host, Eric Balkman, my co host is the definitive commissioner of fantasy football, Farrell Elliott. And Farrell, this is on me. I should have been promoting this. But you have the Kentucky Fantasy Football State Championship podcast cooking at full speed right now. I believe Sean Liggett was the latest guest on there, right? Yeah, Sean comes in with me on game days, uh, special game days Monday and Thursday night and any special night where we're playing football because of uh, COVID cancellations to talk a little bit about the game. And we went into Thursday night's game, and I think we hit about 70% right. We were hoping for uh, big performances from certain players, and I think each of us has come to the conclusion that certain Eagles and certain Giants will not have any big performances forthcoming for us in 2020. And by the way, if you want to check out that podcast, you can get it basically where anywhere uh, anywhere you get podcasts. It's on Spotify. You can check it out on Breaker and everywhere. It's uh, it's a great podcast. I enjoy listening to it each and every week. And of course, follow uh, Farrell on Twitter at Jerry J Farrell Elliott. Excuse me. Follow the Kentucky Fantasy Football State Championship on Twitter at KFFSC. Coming up on tonight's show, we're going to discuss whether or not Richard Rogers is a thing. Who Austin Hooper's replacement is going to be in Cleveland and Ski and the Barn Dog John Laskowski and Barney Newkirk will hang out with us to talk about the Bears receivers not named Allen Robinson, uh, Debo Samuel, <laughs> and a ton more. Farrell, you know what's interesting about uh, Ski and, and Barney coming on tonight? Um, I am actually in a private dynasty league with these guys. I'm not, I think they know that, that it's me um, that's in this league, but we are in – granted, it's week seven, um, and, and this is a dynasty league, so we don't stop the regular season after, after week 11. We go a couple weeks beyond that. But we are in a heated – uh, battle for playoff positioning right now. I'm going to have to bring that up with them. And let me tell you, if it's bulky versus the second place guys in the FFPC main event, I'm behind the eight ball, man. Well, I'm glad that you brought that up, Balky, and I'm sure you'll do very, very well with Johnny Ski and CB there, and uh, I'm sure they're capable players. But, you know, it gives me the opportunity to talk about uh, what you're doing down here in Kentucky. I think the listeners should know that in our Springtimes League, we had two of them, and this one was the Checkered Flag Championships, $5,000 league. And you are sitting firmly in first place of your uh, Parnelli Jones division. Quarterbacks Brady, Gronk and Andrews at tight end, Cup Woods and Tyler Boyd. But I want you to tell me how you got these three running backs, Kamara, uh, Rojo, and Aaron Jones. You've got quite a mix of players here, Balky, and you're on your way to uh, compete for this championship in a very, very solid fashion. 
I was talking with a FFPC high stakes player a couple of weeks ago, and he he was saying to me like, look, the the, the teams that went Camara and Aaron Jones in the first and second rounds, they're the teams that are dominating right now. I feel like we've had a bunch of of players come on this show who went with Kamara and Jones in the first two rounds, and they've had very, very successful teams so far. I was fortunate enough to do that in one league, and it is that Parnelli Jones division of that checkered flag contest with the KFFSC this year. The Ronald Jones thing, I, th- I think it just was, was the right time because he was kind of slipping. This mm-hmm. is when everybody was of the belief that Tampa was going to find somebody uh, to either compete with them or take snaps away, and I got him. Um, and, and I was fortunate enough to get – I had a lot of uh, – I think I had almost $900 – in my fad budget, and I went a little crazy wow. uh, to, to get Gronk this week. I think I paid like 400 plus for him, but I was hurting at tight end, so I wanted to make sure I, I, I got him on my team. And we'll see what happens going forward. Obviously, a lot of season left, but yeah, that is my best Kentucky team right now, and uh, and we'll see what happens going forward. I'm, I'm looking forward to him. Have a lot of fun there uh, for sure. Shout out to the chat room right now. Feel free to post any questions you all might have in there. If you want to connect with us on Twitter, the show is at HSFFO, or I am at Eric Balkman. Farrell is at J Farrell Elliott. You can post, uh, post on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash HSFFO, and feel free to give us a call, 347-426-3682. That's 347-GAME-OVA. You can also email the show at the inbox, football at gmail.com. If you have any questions for me, for Farrell, for Ski, for Barney, now is the time to send them. We will get to all those chat room questions, tweets, and emails in the fantasy feedback segment coming up later on in the show. I want to thank our audio engineer, my best friend Bryce, and our producer and mutual friend Rob as well. Uh, also, those guys were responsible for helping put together tonight's fantasy flash. Also, football guys, draft sharks, and Roto World had a hand in that as well. Farrell, Joe Mixon has been ruled out for week seven against the Browns. Mixon actually hurt his foot in the first half of the week six game, uh, tried to play through it in the second half, didn't work out. He could not practice all week. He's going to miss at least one game and, and could be multiple games. And I'm just curious, mm-hmm. and, and maybe this goes without saying here, but if you have Giovanni Bernard on your team, regardless of the Bengals offensive line, regardless of how good the team is, Giovanni Bernard is, you're going to have to find a way to get him in your starting lineup, be it as a uh, running back two or as a flex, right? He's done it before, and he's got the resume. Little yardage in uh, carries this year, but he's got his usual uh, touches. I, I'm a Mixon owner, and so uh, earlier in the season, I looked up, and despite his limited uh, offensive carries, he carried in the red zone for Cincinnati uh, and scored a touchdown. He... Um, you know, he's, he's there with P. Ryan. He's there with Travion Williams. He's also uh, this Mixon situation, and I don't know, know how long it's going on, but it's right before the trading deadline, so perhaps we can see uh, some movement uh, to get a player in here to help the Cincinnati Bengals in this situation. But, you know, Joe Burrow leads all NFL quarterbacks in passing attempts. He's throwing the ball 41 times a game, and Bernard is the lead back and a noted pass catcher. That alone should get him the play you need. Uh, Pirine is interesting. He could he could steal some snaps. You got to go back a while to 2017, but he had back to back 100 yard games in this league, and uh, you know uh, he has also the power of the beard. We lost our beard in Miami, but <laughs> Pirine's got this excellent excellent beard going on, so maybe he takes over uh, that distinction in the NFL. Yeah, he was a hawk, too. I remember uh, Melvin Gordon set the all-time single-game rushing record for Wisconsin uh, a few years back, breaking a, a record that had been you know, standing for two-plus decades. And it stood for about a week until Samaji P. Ryan broke it a week later for Oklahoma. <laughs> so he certainly got the juice in those legs to get it done, uh, for sure. Uh, you talked about it uh, at the top of the show, the game last night between the Eagles and the Giants. Uh, unfortunate stuff for Deshaun Jackson. He finally finds a way to get back on hmm. the field. And on a punt return, uh, he gets hurt pretty badly. Could not put any weight on it um, to to get off the field, and he was diagnosed with a high ankle sprain. He, I think, he has already been placed on injured reserve. He's going to be out at least the next three games. But Farrell, it's going to be more than that. It's going to be four to six probably. Uh, and and my question to you is this: Now, I think we we have Travis Fulgham firmly entrenched after three games now, pretty successful fantasy production. We know he's going to be the number one. Does this make Alshon Jeffrey any more desirable to you, knowing that Deshaun Jackson is probably going to be on the shelf till maybe early December? No, less. I'm looking at what they're doing with the young players, this team, and picturing where they're going to be 
uh, despite the NFC East, where, where this team is going. And, and I'm less interested in um, Alshon Jeffrey and more interested in the youth that's playing on this team. Ward is an interesting player. I really, really, uh, I really love Travis Fogel. And I, I kick myself for not biting on him after the first week when he was pretty much left on the waiver wires after catching a touchdown week and what I guess would have been a week four catching a touchdown in that week. So um, if you watch him play, and, and he's a victim uh, for my personal scouting of red zone, because I didn't see him enough on red zone if I'd watched this kid <laughs> in a game, I would have definitely gone out to get him. I have questions about any receiver um, you know, right now in Philadelphia, Carson Wentz uh, is a wonderful fantasy quarterback, especially with his work along the goal line. But, man, it's rough from play to play considering what Carson is doing as an NFL uh, quarterback. And he he's going to uh, – yeah, Deshaun Jackson's uh, injury came on special teams. You have to question maybe why he was back there returning those punts. I know he was trying to make something happen, but that shouldn't be the job for him. And um, you look at uh, you look at the upside of, of where this uh, what the, this backfield is going to do uh, when Miles Sanders returned, and now they have a, a good one-two punch with Boston Scott, who I think emerged and, and made plays. He made the kind of plays that will keep him on the field, and uh, I think he uh, bought into a lengthy career as a five foot six inch running back. So those guys come and go, but I think we're going to be talking about Boston Scott for years to come. Big news out of Tampa today. We're going to get to that shortly, but I do want to kind of put a button on this Eagles giants game. The one other thing that stood out to me besides Boston Scott last night, besides Fulgham, besides the Jackson injury, Farrell was Richard Rogers, the former Packers tight end uh, going crazy last night. He gets eight targets from Carson Wentz catches six of them, for 85 yards. Now, this is interesting because Zach Ertz is on IR. We heard the report today that Dallas Goddard might be out until week 10. This was the most receiving mm-hmm. yards Rodgers has, has gotten in almost five years, second most of his career. Um, and by the way, the first most in his career was that game against Detroit where Rodgers threw that Hail Mary on Thursday night football, and Rodgers caught that 60-yard-plus touchdown. So that was his most. This was his second most. It was uh, also 15 more yards than Zach Ertz has gotten in any game so far this season. Carson Wentz loves the tight ends. I'm just kind of curious, Farrell, is Richard Rodgers a thing now for the next couple of weeks with no Ertz and no Goddard in Philly? Oh, I think he's a thing for the for the next couple of weeks and beyond. I don't think this club is very happy with the way Ertz was playing. And uh, the, the attitude, he may have given it lip service, but you could see on the field – uh, that he was uh, not mentally playing through the plethora of injuries like he always has. It, it, some some toughness has left his game. Goddard's a kid that's glad to be there and glad to be getting a chance to play. Uh, Richard Rodgers, yeah, he was on the receiving end of that miracle in Motown. And, uh, you know, Bucky, I think, I think Richard Rodgers, seven years around in this league, uh, he's playing for the minimum. I looked it up. He's playing for $910,000 and, uh, matter of fact, he was uh, so uh, far down in uh, veteran credit number that he actually is uh, less than a 910000 hit on the salary cap. So Howie huh. Roseman, Brandon Brown in the front office, they did a nice job picking up this California bear. And he can't help it that he came, you know, out of college and went to a team Bonky, I can't talk to you about what the Green Bay Packers are, but you know they've never been a place for tight ends. And, um, you know, he caught 58 passes one year back in 2015. I think he's going to be a wonderful uh, receiver for Carson Wentz. And as as Troy Aikman told us last night, we, we couldn't get Troy to quit talking about how the middle of the field was open. I wish he had called down to the Eagles sidelines or maybe over to the <laughs> offensive coordinator and said something and didn't. You know, we also couldn't get Troy to to, to quit to designing and teaching us about what a cornerback switch was uh, down around the goal line either. I, I, I figured we were having some remedial football. But, yes, uh, Rodgers can run after the catch a little more than people give him credit for. I think he's a fine player. He's on two of my uh, FFPC teams, and I wish I had put more waiver wire money out there, Bobby. 
It's interesting, too, because I think in the mid-90s when the Packers went to those two Super Bowls winning one, that was really when they were at their, their most powerful at the tight end with Keith Jackson and Mark Chimura. You know, Bubba Franks was sort of a thing for a year or two, but he, his production was mostly, um, you know, dependent upon touchdowns. Jermichael Finley could have been pretty elite, uh, but that neck injury mm-hmm. really cost him, too. And, and it's been, you know, there, there hasn't been a whole lot of tight end production out of Green Bay since then. In fact, Robert Tanyan, uh, in the, or Tunyon, as we found out in the Green Bay media Tunyon. today, we've been pronouncing mm-hmm. his name wrong all these years. Um, yes. But Tunyon could be a thing this year. We'll see what happens there. But Roger's certainly looking good in Philly. We have uh, John Laskowski and Barney Newkirk coming up in just one minute here. I do want to get to uh, one more thing before we, uh, we talk to the second-place team in the FFPC main event. Big news today, uh, Tampa has signed Antonio Brown to a one-year contract. Now, the details have not been finalized, and obviously Antonio Brown – has to go through the COVID-19 protocols before he can officially become a Buccaneer. But according to ESPN's Adam Schefter, he could play, or at least will be eligible to play, as early as week nine. Uh, Antonio Brown, if you remember, was a teammate of Tom Brady's very briefly uh, in New England. And Tampa looks like they are ready to go all in on a Super Bowl this year. So my question to you, Farrell, is Antonio Brown, uh, he's on the wrong side of 30, but certainly an elite athlete has put up massive numbers before. How do, how good do his numbers get in Tampa when he comes in, in week nine? And how does it affect Chris Godwin and Mike Evans going forward? Now that, uh, the former pro bowler is going to be playing next to him. Not at all. He, he comes in as a significant insurance policy in a year when, uh, COVID makes an insurance policy necessary. Well, we, we see what's happening around the league. You're, you know, I'm sure later on we'll talk a little bit about Emmanuel Sanders. Um, this is a very, very smart move, and they'll get him some snaps, and it it, it, it precludes the end of the season for um, uh, Scotty Miller, and it takes away um, it takes away some promising opportunities and some needed opportunities uh, for some of the younger receivers, because they've got some good ball players on that depth chart. Uh, but it does nothing. It, it does nothing to um, the, uh, the All Pro and Pro Bowl receivers that uh, Brady will be counting on. And when he does get, to, uh, he may have a role, especially in big games. He's always been a big game player, and whatever he does, as long as the team keeps winning, he's going to be a contributor to it. But I think he's going to be a small one. And those that have him rostered for fantasy purposes. Um, it's it's probably not anything that's going to make a huge difference for you. Yeah, I'm kind of with you on that too. And you, you could consider this too: when Antonio Brown is is you know finally playing in Week Nine, you would think it'll take a week or two to get up to speed. So maybe at Week Eleven, he's firing on all cinder, cylinders. But they still, you know, injuries aside, they're still going to have Grunt. They're still going to have Evans, Ronald Jones, Leonard Fournette, Chris Godwin, all uh, viable attacks in that Tampa offense. And by then, you know, the bye week gauntlet is almost over. And, and at that point, you know, if you're playing Antonio Brown, it's not as a bye week fill-in. It's not uh, it, maybe it's for an injury replacement, but it'd be out of desperation. You know, you want to get your guy. And he won't be available there. for you in week 13. None of the bucks will be. Exactly. Another great point, too. So something to keep in mind there, too. Temper your expectations with Antonio Brown. Do not temper your expectations. For tonight's guests, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to bring them in right now. They are former participants in the WCOFF and have played in the FFPC all, all, all the way back since its inception in 2008. They have nearly a dozen league championships under their belt in the FFPC main event and the Football Guys Players Championship. And heading into week seven, they are in second place overall in the 2020 mm. edition of the FFPC main event. Please welcome onto the show John Ski Laskowski and Christian Barney Newkirk. Gentlemen, thanks so much for hopping aboard tonight. Uh, thank you, guys. We're just wondering what took you so long to invite us. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so I teased this at, at the top of the show, guys, and I think you guys are aware, but in the Gridiron Legends Private Dynasty League that, that, uh, that we're both in, we're, we're in a dogfight right now for playoff position in that league. Yes, we are. I got lucky in the redraft and got Alvin Kamara and Rogers and Devonta Adams. A few, uh, a few good players there. Yeah, absolutely. And and that'll be a that'll be a fun a fun showdown. Is and it's not just us. I mean, there's there's plenty of other teams that I, there's. It's actually a fun league. You have a uh, Lance Turbis is in that. Two Packers in that. Kirk Kikis is in it. 
uh, the Dave the Dizzle Gerzak is in that. That is a fun league. Um, Danny Mueller, of course, is in it. Um, it it's it's wow. awesome. It's a lot of fun. We'll look forward to uh, to seeing how that league plays out uh, going forward. Best, um, yeah. I, I do want to. Best um, the best, right? <laughs> yes, it is. It's the best. It's the best of the best. And and certainly we have the best of the best on the show tonight with you guys because there's only one uh, set of teammates that are in second place in the FFPC main event, and that's you guys. I want to pick your brains with fantasy football. So does Farrell tonight. But before we do that, can can you tell the listeners what you do for a living? Ski, I'm going to let you take this one first, and then Barney, go ahead after he's done. Sure. I just got a little shout out to our our, our fans and family and and. For in Dutch Harbor, Brown, Alaska, Alaska, Barney and I uh, both worked there. Uh, I've known him since he was nine years old, and his family. And uh, we actually started playing fantasy football about 30 years ago, before we had internet. Uh, so we did all of our scoring when the when the Monday paper came in, the t- Tuesday paper came. In. Um, so we've been doing this for quite a while, and. And you know, last year we had after week two, we had three teams in the top 20. So we're Wow. We, we fell apart. Uh, we fell apart about week four, week five. I think maybe too much of a, too much of our favorite laughing dog brewing beer. I'm not sure what happened, but uh, th- this year, like with COVID and everything, we we drafted uh, we drafted with a lot of depth this year, and and we were not fortunate enough, like I guess you had in the past, to get Alvin Kamara to drop to us in the ninth pick or anything. But we. Uh, we we drafted really solid this year. And what I did, I went to, a long story short, I went to Dutch Harbor, Alaska, to work in a cannery at 20 years old uh, for a three-month contract, and I ended up staying up 41 years there. Uh-huh. And then I, what I, I retired at 61 to uh, take care of my uh, my elderly father. He's 92 years old, World War II vet, Vietnam vet, Korea vet, so. We uh, I I bought a place in Boise down here where Barney lives too. And long story short, actually I'm busier now than when I was working. But well, you you yeah. guys, uh, I love that in the story that you have staying power and congratulations and continued uh, good health for your father, Johnny Ski. You know, uh, I want to direct my first question to you. You guys, um, when you drafted some this year. Balky clued me into the fact that you did something that I did. Uh, I and, and apparently you're doing most of the. If, if we are doing anything alike, you're doing it better. So congratulations. Uh, <laughs> I wish my teams could fall apart like your teams and still be in the the top 100 or the top 20. But it, but anyway, you guys waited on tight end. When I first started playing in the FFPC, I couldn't quite figure the tight end out. I had too much tight end. I had too little tight end. You guys waited this year. I waited to the ninth round and ended up with Gronk and Gusecki, two very good players, and I have mismanaged them terribly. How did waiting work out for you, and has that been has that been something that you do more often than not? Uh, typically what we do, and it's been my philosophy for a year and Barney's philosophy, we try to get two top running backs with our first two picks, and – we have always waited on tight ends and, you know, a lot of times you're scrapping at the end, you know, it gets about the ninth round. You're going, Holy crap, we don't have a tight end. And you look at the guys that have Kittle and they have Kels. And, and when you play against them, it's like, wow, you know, we have a, I'm not going to name names on the tight ends that we have. But th- this year we waited till like the eighth and ninth round. I think it was the earliest and earliest. And we said, we'll, we'll pass on them. And we'll go for, Say Janu, which we were really high on Janu this year, and Jared Cook, those type of guys, and then, you know, in, in the leagues, this happens every year in fantasy football. Somebody comes out of the middle of nowhere, whether it's going to be a running back, a wide receiver, or a tight end. And so, uh, in in week four, we you know we read, like like all the other fantasy people, you you scour every site there is, and then we saw the one that said is Robert Tanya the next George Kittle. My dad being a big Packer fan, we, I told Barney, I said, you know, we got to put some money on this guy. And, and luckily we did it. We didn't have to spend a lot. Mm. And of course, the very next week he scored 38 points. And it's like, you know, that saves your bacon and some. But those are, that's what happens okay. with fantasy football. But Good typically job. we don't. We Last year we had uh, a team called Mikey Likes It that uh, 
we did well with and we went out of the norm. We we uh, I think we had number two. We had McCaffrey. He fell to number two for some reason. We took McCaffrey and then we took Kittle, and then we took Patrick Mahomes. And that was the uh, you know, your first how many rounds in fantasy football pretty much make your team. And and so we did go with that. But typically, we don't go for a tight end and like and the same with quarterbacks. We don't take a quarterback typically until eighth or ninth or tenth round either. So. It just happened to work out. I mean, John o. Smith is nothing to sneeze at, and neither's Jared Cook. Uh, we were really high this year on Herb Smith, and he started out slow, but you know, the last couple of games he's starting to catch balls. So we're uh, he is. we're hoping. Yeah, it's that sort of sell about too. When you wait on tight end, hitting on those guys correctly, that makes your team huge. Uh, really makes it a championship contender, as you guys know being second place in the FFPC main event. Um, I, I, this is another one, to, uh, a question to bring up here, Barney. This is for you. You guys have another top 50 team in the main event right now, and, and one of the things that is in common with both these teams is C.D. Lamb on both of these squads. What was it about him that you guys knew he'd be a good choice for you um, when, you know, going into the season, you knew he'd be competing for targets not only with Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup, but Blake Jarwin and uh, Ezekiel Elliott as well? Well, listen, we, uh, we knew that the, the, the uh, Dallas team, our offense was going to be on fire, right? We, we had uh, Dak, who I mean, dropped, dropped the sixth round. round. What, what, what a value there. there. You know, all these guys going for, um, you know, Mahomes and Jackson and, you know, second, third. Oh, man, I'm, I'm going to get Jackson back in six. And Lamb was the best receiver in the draft, bar none. And, and let's, let's, let's be honest, honest, I mean, I mean <laughs> Cooper, Cooper has had a lot of problems uh, with uh, uh, injury, right? right? And, and Michael Dow, he's, he's, he's a wonderful guy, guy, right? right? He's, 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 he's a big play receiver. And, man, man get, get, I mean, getting get Cooper, Cooper or C. Lamb, Lamb, huge for that team. Jerry Jones knew it. You've seen him with drafting him. Going across the middle. I mean, what, what a, what a, what a huge, huge pickup that was. was. And we got seven. And we got him in. We got six main events. We got him in five of them. And that's how high we were on the back Johnny, uh, you know, you you and CB, I, I gotta I gotta ask uh, before I get to my next question. I want to ask you. Uh, Balky posted a picture of your uh, impending appearance here on the High Stakes Fantasy Hour, and it looked to me like you guys um, were sitting around, uh, looked like Section One Fifty Eight, One Sixty in the outfield there at Comiskey Park. Uh, did I tag that about right? Um, that's about right. Yeah, and we uh, we uh, we fulfilled a dream last year. Barney's a Chicago Bears fan. My dad's a huge uh, Packers fan. Of course, you could tell all my hat and all my other stuff. I'm a I'm a huge Steelers fan. So we decided to go to the opening game last year. We went to we went to Chicago and uh, and watched the game, and we got the cheap seat so we could. Buy uh, buy more beer because the beer is pretty expensive at the ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> I like I really like what you guys are talking about in this beer. I've got to make a run to Chicago and uh, and spend some time and see if some of this winning can rub off on me. I I, uh, I had a wonderful experience uh, a couple summers ago at uh, Comiskey Park. Uh, ended up at Tommy Turtles. Uh, Met a wonderful young lady that asked me for a moody tongue, and I really thought we had skipped first base and were going somewhere else completely until I found out that was one of your Chicago craft beers, and so I went and got a, <laughs> a moody tongue. But uh, yeah, well, we, we discovered the best pizza in the world. And that's at Giordano's. If you ever get there, you have to. It, it's more oh, like yeah. a, a pie. It's a pizza pie. And uh, we, we had a great time there. The only thing I have to complain about was Soldier Field. We're used to being on the uh, West Coast and being in Alaska. We've got a lot of Mariners games. We've been to uh, Seahawks games. Not fans of either, but it's closest. And uh, you get out of the restaurants of the bar and you stagger right into the into the games. You know, at Soldier Field, we stayed at the Hyatt Regency, and it took you like 15 minutes to walk to the stadium. We got there three hours early because we were so excited. But there's no bars around Soldiers Field. Uh huh. 
It's a problem. No. There's a park. They have a park, and that's about it. And you can't get beer in a park. But you know what you can um, get in the Los Angeles Chargers uh, backfield this weekend is two opportunities to score some fantasy points. And I've been setting with this. I personally am a big, big fan of the guy you guys have rostered. Uh, I met him in my other world as a professional sports agent. He is one of my favorite guys that I've met in, in the last decade, and that's Joshua Kelly. And um, I, I pumped his horn a little too much in a previous game. They came out against New Orleans. So he and Jackson both had opportunities. Jackson was the hot hand. He got he got the more opportunities in what we thought was going to be a 50-50 split, maybe a 60-40 split for Josh. Uh, it, it was more of a 70% going to Jackson. Now, my question is for you. Is the Jacksonville Jags rolling here? 28th worst defense against the rush. Uh, we know the head coach, Anthony Glenn, wants to run the ball. We've got a quarterback that's throwing the ball 35 times a game, and that's not exactly the team that he's designed to play, although he does have these great wide receivers. So my question to you is we think the Chargers are going to get ahead in this game. Does Joshua Kelly get the action in the second half as they try to pound that ball pick up four and five yards of carry and soak that win away. And which running back are you guys going to put in your lineup? Well, we don't got them started in any of our lineup right now. I mean, uh, we got, we got a little bit of depth, uh, but yeah, he's great. I mean, we were, we were hoping for a little more uh, touchdown action. I mean, you know, the, even mm-hmm. with um, Austin Eckler being there, we thought Kelly was going to be the guy that, that uh, was going to score the touchdowns. Right. I mean, that that was what it was coming coming through all training camp, and he looked good, and he was gonna he was gonna do his thing, and he hasn't really done that, and he's fumbled, and he's and he's he's looked pretty mediocre, you know, in a, in a in a role that he should have ran away with. And dude, Justin Jackson, he, he's a talent, man. There ain't no doubt about that. Um, I nope, hope no doubt. that you know. I hope that they they give him a little more of a split. You know, uh, I'd like to see 50-50 anyway and give give uh, give Kelly them goal line carries like they say they're go- they were going to or we thought they were going to. Um, yeah, man, I, I think he can – I definitely think he can score a touchdown here uh, this week. Uh, why not? And, dude, Herbert's been amazing, you know. Yeah, wow. Great. great. Two great receivers and a great tight end. Um, get get down to that goal line and, and, and give it to Kelly, man. I think he can score a touchdown here. Talking with uh, Ski and the Barn Dog, second place team in the FFPC main event heading into week seven. Uh, Ski, this might be a little bit of a sensitive subject for you, but what's going on with Juju Smith-Schuster? Um, a, no, that's question number one. And then also, how safe is it to say that Chase Claypool is actually going to be the Pittsburgh receiver you want to get in your lineup going forward and, and that Smith Schuster should be benched if these fantasy owners can afford to do it. Well, you know that is my favorite team, and and I say, what a problem for Pittsburgh to have so many weapons. I mean, they're they got right. a great tight yeah. end. They have, they have four wide receivers. They run them back and catch the ball. But after last year, you know, we and we mistakenly drafted Juju really high last year, and and then of course Big Ben got hurt, and we didn't touch him anywhere this year. We didn't want him, and matter. What, what I see happening is uh, Juju, may, he's on the outside. Does he draw? There, there could be a lot of theories. He draws uh, double coverage. Uh, Clay pulls open over the middle. Deontay Johnson's a freak when he gets the ball. And James Washington's no slouch. So I, I don't know if it's just a week to week. And I mean, I, I, I did some, uh, I did some homework today. And I look at they all have the same, they all have the same amount of uh, targets. They're all in the upper twenties. And so, uh, do do you bench Juju? I mean, uh, that's a talent. Uh, but right now, Claypool is the the flavor ice cream, favorite ice cream of the uh, last two weeks. But Deontay's been out. Deontay may come back and get all the reception. So, I'm not I'm not heartbroken. I mean, I, they have a tough game this week. Uh, we have uh, we have uh, Derrick Henry in in this team, as a matter of fact. And by the way, I gotta let you know, we are in first place right now, just from last night's game. Or, the, or there, you go. Nice game. there you go. Oh, yeah, don't, don't forget about that. But it uh this is uh this is a long a long season. I mean it's sixteen weeks that you go through this and it's 
it, it, there's going to be some up and down. There's a great team behind this, and I can't remember the name, but you know he had uh, he had three of the uh, he had three of the Arizona Cardinals that uh, that just went off, and it's um, it, it's going to be a long season. But I, I'm not too worried about Juju, and you know if Juju draws double coverage, well you're going to have some guys open across the middle. But we didn't touch him anywhere. We you know we had. Uh, our number one wide receiver, and a lot of people might laugh at but our number one wide receiver in every draft that we took was uh, Calvin Ridley. We were high on Calvin Ridley. So, anyway, back to the question. I'm not. I'm not too worried about the Steelers. Just a big game this week, and uh, hopefully they keep marching. Now, CB got the last running back question that I had, and and, and either one of you guys can answer this, but I'm going to direct it to you, John. Uh, my favorite, one of my favorite players. I can't get. I, I never get tired of talking about this player, Raheem Mostert. Uh, how many how many Mostert rosterings did you guys have? How often did you draft him? Well, we we didn't get him anywhere. As a matter of fact, we uh, like I said, yeah, well, we, I want to ask this where you can get him next year. I I keep wanting to find out ways that I can make people notice that I think this is one of the greatest running backs in the game, and I'm going to put for your benefit runs like a Steeler, so you can pick out your Steeler <laughs> that he runs like. But I uh, really really oh, love oh, this oh, CB says you guys are you get too much depth. You got too much depth to play Joshua Kelly. Oh wait, wait a minute. What's what's he saying there? I'm I'm sorry. I was talking over there. Say that again, Sue. Well, no, most most of the beast. I, I don't think he's the beast on the team. Uh, a lot of they they got too much. I mean, they're they're, they're trying to do too much right now. I mean, why why would you even sign? Um, McKissick, I mean, just give the reins to the guy. I, I agree with you. He needs to be on Yes, I agree with you, too. And I, I think more of that was coming, especially when he opened the game. I can't remember who it was against, but he opened the game with an 80-yard touchdown. I think it was a pitch and catch and run um, yeah, two weeks ago. But he's gone for a while. He's out of this lineup. So my question Despite the fact that he runs like a Steeler, he won't be running for the next few weeks for the Niners. You kind of mentioned it. We have Jarek McKinnon, a player that, that uh, like Deshaun Jackson, can't get off the IR. And I, I, I hope good things comes to Jarek McKinnon. I'd like to also talk to you about uh, a rookie running back, a free agent that shows flashes, uh, Jermichael Hasty, and was a waiver wire pickup. Now, see – I want to talk to you about Jamichael Hasty because our listeners are lesser mortals like me, and these are some of the running backs, Kelly and Hasty, that we're talking about playing. But we don't we don't have the depth that you guys have at it. But if you looked at this 49er situation, and for the benefit of all our other listeners, can you uh, tell us uh, McKinnon, Hasty, Jeff Wilson, do the 49ers have a drop off at the position, or do they put up points this weekend against the Patriots? Oh, I think I think they put up points, and I, I think it's their philosophy. It's it's what they do in San Francisco. Certain teams can do this, and it's they always have that uh, saying in the NFL: "Next man up." And yep. we watched him Casey, and uh, we didn't pick him up anywhere. And I was reading an article today saying that he runs like Marshawn Lynch, and I go, "Whoa, that, that's kind of a big statement, you know." But if you have a good offensive line and you have some receivers out there, and you can hand the ball off, I mean. The 49ers do this. It's kind of a plug and play. Um, I'm thinking his career kicks off, and then he gets McDonald's as a sponsor, and then we get the McCasey burger or the McCasey breakfast sandwich. You know, so, <laughs> something in there. It's going to be. Uh, who knows? It's. I just you know, and we. It's not that we weren't high on Mostert before the season started, and them, and but we're great partners. Because we have a lot of the same philosophy, and then we have to keep mm-hmm. him and you know each other in check. Uh, Alshon Jeffrey was a, a big one last year for Barney, and, I, and I'm not a big Barney fan, so or uh, Jeffrey fan. So I, mm-hmm. I let him take one player that he likes, and then he he lets me take a player that I'm high on, and not so high on. But the the, the 49ers up and down. Garoppolo came back two weeks ago. He didn't look that hot. He looked a lot better last week. So, and New England is. And New England is not what New England was in the past, but it, I think it's going to be a tough game. I, I, you know, I think both of us pretty much – I'm picking the 49ers to win that game. Well, I think I think 49ers too, but Hasty, Hasty looks good. It's a difference. You like Mostert? Uh, Mostert. Well, Hasty looks pretty good. Pretty good. And, and if you don't think he did, you can be watching football. 
Talking with John Laskowski and Barney Newkirk, the second place team in the FFPC main event right now. Barney, uh, is there a second wideout from Chicago that you can make an argument for being rostered in high stakes leagues? Uh, or is that a, just uh, something to shy away from? Just make sure Allen Robinson is starting for you and don't worry about rostering any of the other ones. How do you feel about that? Yeah, there is a, a number two wide receiver called Jimmy Brown. Uh, <laughs> it ain't a wide receiver. Um, no. But well, the question is, you know, I mean, uh, Tom Robinson is leading the league in the market. That's huge. Um, but no, I mean, it, 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 Chicago's always been a run team. They, they win their games with, with defense. We all know that. Um, but Jimmy Brown, you, you did not look, you know, look at the target. I, I think it's like six, five, five, eight. I mean, you look for him uh, in the end zone. Uh, and then he doesn't even want to your tight end, right? I mean, if he gets the touchdown, gets three or four receptions, you know, 40 yards, that's a win. But, yeah, I, I wouldn't start any other any other uh, Chicago wide receiver for sure. I mean, it's, it's a dumpster fire at this point. I mean, Montgomery's running well right now, uh, and we'll take that. Uh, they're deep in the women's football game. And, hey, we got a kicker now. This team know how to put it through the other right. And that, that is a, that's a plus. You know, uh, the, 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 you're right about that, CV. John, I got a question. I've got a question for you, and I know I can get an honest answer because I am talking about a Tennessee Titan wide receiver that's playing your Pittsburgh Steelers this week. Now, I – I like you. I, I think this is a road team. This is this is my pick of the week, and I think Pittsburgh comes in here and walks away uh, with this game. But Corey Davis, a player that I've admired for a long time, that really had a rough year last year, returns to the lineup after his, after his COVID benching. And um, is he a guy that you could foresee with the excellent passing games that Tannehill has had? Yeah, Tannehill is ranked uh, in, um, in in quarterback um, rating as the number four quarterback in the league. He's in front of a lot of guys that throw the ball more. Now he gets back Corey Davis. Uh, is Corey Davis a player that you could get in your lineup with an opportunity or some of your favorite names, Fitzpatrick, uh, Hayden, a uh, kid that came over from Kansas City, Nelson, and then – then Edmonds, do those guys, which I know you know all their names, do those guys shut down all receivers from the Tennessee Titans? I'll, I'll give you the final. I'll give you the final hint. Two hundred and nineteen passing yards allowed by the Pittsburgh Steelers. How are you looking at Corey Davis? Yeah, I don't. I don't think Corey's a big a, a big start. A good start this week. AJ Brown. We hope that he gets up. Uh, like I said, on this team we do have Derrick Henry. And when you have Derrick Henry and you can play action and you know, you got you line you don't have any wide receivers, you just put the whole offensive line in front of them and watch them go. And I think it's gonna be I think the game's gonna be closer than a lot of people think. And the Tennessee's no slop they're they're a slobber knocker team, kinda of like the Steelers, like the Bears. They have they have a great defense. Uh they they play to their competition. Tannenhill out of the middle of nowhere. I mean, he was put out to dry for a while, and he yep. got the start in Tennessee, and he, he's just running with it, and he, he he's done great. And we're hoping for a big game out of John this week, and uh, yeah, and we keep cussing, uh, you know, put Fersker back on the bench, get him off the field. We want Johnu in there, and it's and unfortunately he got hurt last week, and Fersker had a big game. But uh, Corey, when we we did draft Corey this year. And and we looked at it and we said, you know, he's uh, when he was drafted, he was supposed to be the the next great a uh, great wide receiver, and he just he just hasn't uh, hasn't produced. But he looks really good this year, and I don't know if it's because I think he's in a contract year, and and he's trying to prove his worth, you know. And then of course COVID hit him, but I'm thinking this is going to be a smash mouth game, and and we're hoping for another 94 yard run out of. Uh, uh, Derrick Henry and, <laughs> and and you know we had all plans of being up by like forty or fifty points this last week and Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers that's what we did we did Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Jones it didn't come out too good and we've had weeks where we drafted like I said we drafted two 
Two two good running backs. We, we like everybody seems to be getting Aaron Jones in the second round. We got him in the second round, and then we went with the Calvin Ridley's, the uh, Lockett's, the Boyd's, and we've had to suffer through a few weeks. Uh, there was a couple weeks there where Boyd and Lockett like nine points between the two of them. We go, what the heck's going on? But you know, we've had our bacon save, like we said, with Robert Tanyan in the one game and Derrick Henry this last week, and. We might be limited on time here, but I got to share a little story on that Tuesday game. We were out here, and we're, that week was the week that Aaron Rodgers was on on a bye, and then it looked like Tennessee may not play on may not play on Tuesday. So we scrambled. We spent way too much money on Dearness Johnson. Uh, we went and luckily got Teddy Bridgewater. We stuck him in. But my dad was out here as we were going through the game. And of course, like we had way too much beer again, but it got towards, <laughs> it got towards the end. Of, it got towards the end of the game, and they're getting ready. They're down at the end zone, and Brian and I are going, ah, hell, we're not going to get it first. And he turns around and rolls out and throws the ball to Janu. Well, long story short, we're, we jump up and down. My dad doesn't know what's going on. The dog comes running in from the backyard. The grandkids come in from the house. My dad goes down. My dad goes down on the ground. And he's 92 years old. And I said, oh, buddy, I think he had a heart attack. I think he had a heart attack. So, you know, MacGyver, I went and uh, pulled the extension cord out of the wall, cut it, peeled the ends back, and I said, plug it in. And he goes, what are you going to do? And I go, I'm going to zap him. And we zapped him, and he came too. And, you know, he's recovering now. He's just got a couple of burn marks on his chest. But, but, but he came through, and it was a – like so we've never – we've been well, like I said, last year we had a team in second place, and this year was the uh, – uh, and uh, ended the week two weeks ago in first place, and it was a. Uh, if you'd have been, we got the Steelers man cave out here in the garage, and I think everybody in the neighborhood was calling the police. We were so loud, Jim. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> God! What a story! <laughs> Holy! God. I didn't really zap him. He's got, he's got a pacemaker. I might have shocked him to death if we'd have. But uh, continued yeah, we continued good health to uh, to Dad, guys. And the neighborhood neighbors are calling police. Nobody's calling an ambulance because John's got the uh, John. John knows what to do with the electricals of the house. So good job. Oh, we've had neighbors call, stop calls, you know. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Hey guys, I know we're running short on time, but I do. Farrell has one more question for you. Before we get to that, we do have time for one email here. Ski, I'm going to pitch this one to you. It's from Jason in Polk City, Florida. He writes, "What's up, guys?" Debo Samuel at New England or Adrian Peterson in Atlanta this week. Jason, thank you for the email. Ski, what, what would you be doing at Flex there? Would it, would it be Samuel or Peterson for you? Now we're both going Debo. Debo. Yeah, yeah. go Debo, man. And, and I mean, uh, uh, Adrian Peterson here, so uh, touchdown uh, reliant. Uh, who's going to get this? He's both good with. Uh, uh, Let's do it with right now. Go, Ski, I want you to go first, and, and uh, Barney, I want you to follow up. So, Ski and CB, here's the things I need from you. This is this is the toughest question. This is why it's always last. It's the very, very <laughs> toughest question uh, because you've got to tell me you, – you, you've no got to tell me a player that will be a bust <laughs> and a player that will be a sleeper. Now, you've got to wait until I ask the question. Because I got it, there's important information that you must know. In the area of bust, Devonta Freeman and Darius Slayton are off the table. You can't use them. <laughs> so, if we're bust, John, you Ooh. go first. Give me, give me a bust and a sleeper, and then we'll go. Uh, then we'll go to Barney. Uh, I got a couple busts, and it's it's a uh, it's it's a wide receiver who we've just loved for years, and we always call him the Smurf. Uh, there's no way I, I don't know if he's just old or if he's banged up or he, he's just not meshing with his quarterback, but Julian Edelman's got to sit on the bench this week. Mm. Love the guy, another Wes Welker, you know, and then, and we even picked up uh, the Miller kid out of, uh, out of Tampa Bay Tampa. because Brady was saying mm-hmm. he was the next Wes Welker and the Edelman and that, and that didn't produce too much for us, but I, I love Julian Edelman. I mean, what he what he's done and and over his career, but it just I'm not sure what the problem is if he's banged up, trying to do too much, or he's just 34 years old and it's wear and tear. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. To go off this weekend, uh, there's been a few of them. And I made I made a list. I, I'm going to go with J.D. McKissick out of uh, out of Washington. Mm. 
J.D. McKissick, and, and if you've watched the last couple of games, which I'm sure everybody, anybody that's in fantasy football, the, the guy is – and we drafted Gibson everywhere. And I, I think I, I did get him in the uh, in the Gridiron Legends uh, League this year in the draft too. But it, it's like him and Jonathan Taylor. I mean, you expect these guys to come right into the NFL and they're going to take off. Well, Gibson, they're not no. – they're either not feeding them the rock that much, but McKissick's catching balls. He's running. He looks where he got Kizik is the team. Washington Football Club version of James White, and he's uh, yes, he twelve and fourteen points every week, and he's doing a wonderful job, win or lose. And you would expect him to to do well against the Cowboys. Barney, what you got for us? Barney, come back to life and give us those. Give us those. Uh, whoa, 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 yeah, yeah, that's whoa, what we need. Don't just put me on the jet, man. I'm going back up. <laughs> Hey, no, uh, this is the bus, the bus this weekend. I'm a Bears fan, right? Um, it, it's Allen Robinson. I mean, you, 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 the number two, he's facing the number two team against wide receivers in the city, right? I mean, Jalen Ramsey's no joke. I'm a Florida State fan, too. I know where he came from. Last year, he shut him down. I'm not saying don't start him, but I, if he gets 10, 12 fantasy points, you're up. Also, on the other side of the ball, we're going to keep it. This is an interesting stat. The Bears have only allowed one touchdown to a closing receiver. That is, that's stupid. That's stupid. So you got the number two team against receivers and the number three team against receivers. I don't see much going on. If you want to do it, do it. And uh, my, 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 my uh, guy is going to break it up. Dude, Cole Beasley. I mean, the guy has been a PPR machine. Nobody's been on the on the wagon. I'm on the wagon. Especially if John Brown is 100. percent We've seen what Cole Beasley can do. He's a safety blanket for uh, John Brown. I love Cole Beasley. Hey, Tim Patrick too. Don't don't, don't forget, forget about, about that guy. I mean, I mean, wow, there's two for you. Put them in your lineup. Don't think twice. And uh, yeah, let's go. I love it. It's good stuff. It's great analysis from uh, two very talented players tonight. The second place FFPC main event team owners heading into week seven. It is John Laskowski and Barney Newkirk. Gentlemen, good luck in not only the main event, but in all your leagues this season. I want to thank you so much uh, for taking some time out of your weekend to uh, to join us tonight. We certainly enjoyed it. Uh, and we'll talk to you again real soon, guys. Be safe and uh, enjoy week seven. Okay. Thanks for having us, guys. Thank you. Exactly. John Laskowski, Barney Newkirk, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, you know, I should, I should say this too. I, I, Farrell, I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not. You might be, but I host a local uh, fantasy football show in Northeast Wisconsin here on Thursday afternoons on the terrestrial radio as Howard Stern calls it. And one of my co-hosts for that show is uh, his radio name is Leo Kuyper Jr. And his he's usually spot on with his calls. And one of his breakouts this week, J.D. McKissick. One of his busts, Allen Robinson. So it's 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 mm. it's, it's teaming from everywhere. Uh, start McKissick, and 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 he wasn't saying. And I don't think he could bench Robinson, but I do think you have to temper your expectations uh, with him this week, yeah. which is unfortunate because I got a lot of Robinson this year, Farrell. Well, you might have a lot to back him up, and you just you just heard our expert tell you, twelve, thirteen points would be a big game if you get more from somebody else, Balky. You'd be the brave man and bench Robinson. Yeah, I I might have to do that. We'll see. We'll see how much liquid courage I have on Saturday night when I'm going <laughs> on, on on my lineups. All right, so let's get through. We got a few minutes left in the show. Let's get through as many emails as we can from the listeners. Corona, California is where Henry's emailing us from. He writes, "Would you guys start Jared Cook on a Saints team without Michael Thomas or the recently resurgent Gronk?" Thanks, gentlemen. That is Henry in Corona, California. Mm-hmm. Well, Farrell, this is interesting because not only is Michael Thomas officially out this week. Uh, with that hamstring injury. But Emmanuel Sanders is on the COVID-19 list. They're going to be out their top two receivers. It's going to be Traquan Smith and uh, like Benny Fowler and, and some you know, Deontay Harris yep. and, and these other guys uh, at, at receivers. So to me, this makes Cook very appealing. I would start him over Gronkowski this week. No, we're going to start Gronkowski. Gronkowski is coming up in a very, very big game against the Raiders. And then Gronk breaks through, as he did this past weekend, that, that's all we needed. 
It's it's now becoming it's it's now becoming the kind of uh, play every week for Gronkowski. Now I like your Cook play. Um, ninth versus uh, ninth versus the tight end. Uh, the Panthers are uh, that doesn't bother me much. Cook had good games against the Panthers uh, last year. I don't know how important that is, but I am a little frustrated when you get outside the first few rounds of, of the Saints players. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders was a nice last, uh, later round pickup. But to quickly get to my point, uh, at the quarterback position, uh, they bring in another player to play quarterback. At the tight end position, you have multiple tight ends, especially as you get closer to the goal line. I think Cook is a good, good blue-collar player. But this is a blue-collar, uh, multifaceted, coach-tinkering, uh, lineup-changing a team every is, is uh, the Saints get whistled more often. It seems like for illegal lineups because there's stuff that they just haven't quite figured out. They got so many new plays. Uh, if if they were more of a traditionally run football team, and I could count on Breeze dropping back and, and targeting his tight end, I am going forward with Cook. But Gronkowski's my man in this. Uh, if I'm choosing between these two. Yeah, I hope you're right, too, because I will be playing Gronkowski a lot this week, too. Uh, his targets yes, have gone sir. up for what it's worth every single week so far this season. So uh, we'll see what happens with Gronk. Hey, our good buddy and, and one of our all-time, if not our all-time uh, greatest listener, Hudson Kern Reeve, the wasp guy himself oh. in the chat room, he wants to know, Farrell, is Henry Ruggs, this is a great question for you, uh, Mr. Raiders, uh, Ruggs, is he startable going forward right now after he's had a, a, a big game now for Las Vegas? Oh, Hudson Kern Reed, one of my all time favorite guys uh, there in uh, New York State. Yes, Hudson, you must get Henry Ruggs in your lineup. And I just saw a little bleep come across the screen. Uh, Gruden believes that the offensive line will be, will be back. And uh, they haven't played that well for the Raiders, but at least a unit intact is better than what we were looking at earlier in the week. So Ruggs should be in your lineup. He's also a jet sweep threat. He's also a screen pass threat. Uh, the, the best thing I could say about Ruggs is in Kansas City game, uh, everyone saw Carr hit him with a perfect uh, crossing pattern for a touchdown. But the, what I was impressed with with Ruggs when Carr underthrew the ball miserably, it could have been intercepted. A lot of receivers would have tried just to knock the pass down and make sure the defensive back didn't catch it. Riggs out physical the, the safety, went back, uh, found the ball. I said Riggs, I meant Ruggs. Henry Ruggs is your guy. I'm strong on this player. I believe he'll be targeted often. I think he's fantasy gold. Um, let's go to Stan in Morrisville, North Carolina. This is more Saint stuff here. It's a past or future decision for me at quarterback this week. Justin mm. Herbert hosting Jacksonville or Drew Brees facing my Panthers in the Superdome. That is Stan in Morrisville, North Carolina. Stan, appreciate the email. Appreciate you listening. Farrell, I, you know, not to keep beating this dead horse, but Drew Brees without weapons and Justin Herbert has been looking really good. Um, maybe the Chargers mm-hmm. haven't been looking really good, but Herbert's been looking real good. I'm going to play Herbert. I actually like him quite a bit this week. Mm-hmm. I might play him too, but probably not for that reason. We discussed the Taysom Hill effect. That's what that's what I was looking for. It, it, it bothers me so much I forget the player's name, but that's Taysom Hill. Uh, when that, when Breeze has Alvin Kamara, sometimes I think he has all the weapons he needs. I looked it up uh, Kamara when he's out in a pass pattern. When he when he when you see him run out of the backfield, forty percent of the time. Uh, Breeze is throwing to him. And, and Kamara is one of the best pass catchers in the league, just the fact that he's listed as a, as a running back. But it is it is Herbert uh, with the Chargers, who is with Jacksonville. We talked earlier about the fact that the, the boys that we had on, uh, Ski and CB, they, they, they could not get really excited about Joshua Kelly. And perhaps they don't see that, that the Chargers in this game will return more to a running attack. Uh, Herbert's throwing the ball 35 times a game. Um, yeah, this is this is a tough one. I'm going to I'm going to side with you for different reasons, um, just because I want to see Herbert throwing to Mike Williams, and uh, I think his tight end Hunter Henry finally breaks loose and has a very significant game. 
Yeah, we're waiting on that Hunter Henry breakout. Maybe it will be this week indeed. Uh, Zach in Pittsburgh writes, Dear Balky and Farrell, maybe Melvin Gordon's status will ultimately dictate my decision, but should I roll with Philip Lindsay or Jarek McKinnon on Sunday? Appreciate you. That is Zach in Pittsburgh. Thank you so much, Zach. Uh, officially, Melvin Gordon um, is is not going to be disciplined by the Broncos. I believe he was practicing this week. I don't have the official status, mm-hmm. but I know, as far as I can tell, he hasn't been listed as out. Um, Philip Lindsay, Melvin Gordon, and the Broncos are hosting the Kansas City Chiefs this weekend, which should be a cold game. And I heard there's going to be snow there, too, which is very yes. interesting. Total on that game has do- uh, dropped three and a half points since it's opened, and the Chiefs have actually gone up. Uh, quite a bit uh, in the spread as they are now eight point favorites in that game. And we do know that Jarek McKinnon is going to be in action or should be in action on Sunday as his San Francisco 49ers are taking on the New England Patriots in Foxborough. Farrell, uh, what would you do here? Would you go with Lindsay or roll with McKinnon? Running backs are successful in the passing game against the Chiefs, and then they're going to be in a chase position. I like the fact that, you know, snowy games are tougher on the defense than it is in the offense. I don't know why the totals go down because it, it's much, much tougher on the defense. The, the, the offense knows where it's going. And Philip Lindsay went for over 100 uh, last week. He didn't catch a pass, but he will against the Chiefs. And that's what makes me like Lindsay uh, a little bit more than McKinnon because the fellows we talked to, they said it's not the same New England team, but they are an attacking team on defense, and they will attack that uh they're rushing opportunities, and I think Garoppolo has many, many targets to work with. I think they're going to have to throw the ball uh, in New England to amass the points to get the win, despite what happened last weekend. Uh, this is really a toss-up, and it comes down to just um, whoever uh, you personally like the best. I have a difficult time separating these players. So, Balky, I'm going to throw this one back to you. You're going to have to give the advice here on who to start. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's I'm going to roll with Lindsey. And, and I, I get what you're saying about how, um, you know, running backs will be able to achieve points in the passing game. And I think that I would lean towards McKinnon having a bigger passing game impact um, than, than, um, than Lindsey. Lindsey didn't catch a pass last week in, in his return, and that was mm. without Melvin Gordon. But, I, you know, he ran so hard on the ground. And, and I feel like when you look at um, uh, what, the, what the Denver Broncos are going to be able to do, you know, Noah Fant's coming off an injury. Um, I do like Tim Patrick this week. I'm, I'm not too keen on Jerry Judy for whatever yes. reason. Uh, it just doesn't seem like they've developed much of a connection with, with him and Drew Locke. But I think Lindsey, uh, from the volume aspect to me, is, is what tips the scales here. So I'm going to start Lindsey uh, over McKinnon in that matchup. Um, Let's move on. It is Terry in San Antonio. He wants to know, love this. Oh, first of all, love the show, guys. Thank you, Terry. Can you help me? I know Christian Kirk only had the two catches last week, but they were both for scores. Is he trending up while Gallup is trending down? I can only start one this week. Thank you so much, Terry in San Antonio. This week, you look at those uh, those teams. It is uh, the Arizona Cardinals who destroyed the Cowboys on Monday Night Football. What a game that was. Uh, The Cardinals are hosting the Seattle Seahawks. That game could turn into a shootout, potentially. 55-and-a-half is the total on this game. Uh, And then those Cowboys are taking on the Washington football team in D.C. Uh, That game, uh, 44-and-a-half total, but uh, Washington's actually a point favorite. Farrell, I I think I would lean towards Gallup here. I just The Kirk thing makes me nervous. The only way I would really play Kirk is if DeAndre Hopkins somehow misses this game, which I don't think is going to happen. They wore out. You are exactly right. The Cardinals wore out on both sides of the ball, uh, the Dallas Cowboys, and Kirk had his two touchdowns. But, you know, they wore wore out and won that game going away, and they completed nine passes. You don't have to have volume from the quarterback, and when you do get volume, it's going to go to Hopkins. So I take a look at what Michael Gallup's game means. Uh, We have a – we have a quarterback here that uh, game script and bad luck for, uh, caused uh, situations that he was uh, unsuccessful with last Monday night. Uh, turnovers and some difficult calls for him. And I'm not making excuses for Andy Dalton, but I did expect a different game. Here in Louisville, Kentucky, we have always uh, had plenty of Bengal fans around, and they always talk, what can Andy do when he has the weapons? 
and uh, he, he's got all the weapons around him, but none of them particularly played well. I think they've got it straight in the fourth quarter. I think C.D. Lamb, uh, Cooper made nice catches. Gallup had a very, very rough game, especially dropping an obvious touchdown. So with that being said, we had talked earlier about Gallup having a skill set that relates very, very well to um, our proverbial red rifle. And I think that those guys are going into this game at Washington and will we'll connect and continue to connect, and they will have to have a very, very impressive offensive game I don't know if you've got the total in front of you, Balky, but they'll have to have a very impressive offensive game to cover their defense. This kid, Allen, playing quarterback over there uh, for Washington. McLaurin was targeted 12 times last week and was very successful. Expect that to continue. They have a lot of tools in Washington. They can be competitive. So I see Dallas working hard to answer that. They'll work it through the wide receivers, and Gallup could be one of the better ones. Yeah, you're right on that total on that game is indeed 44 and a half uh, for that game. So we'll see what happens. Another one of those great NFC East showdowns that we are treated to this year. Uh, I think that number is too low. I, I think that number is a little low. Um, and it has come down, too. That's another game that's coming down mm-hmm. for whatever reason. All of the totals are plunging. Over betters, you mm-hmm. know, make hay while the sun shines. Get in on those games uh, right now, both in that Kansas City-Denver game and that Dallas-Washington game. Final email tonight it's from tom he's in chicago he writes i play in a deep tight end premium league and lost austin mm. hooper should i pick up harrison bryant or david and joku to start the next couple of weeks at a minimum keep up the great work that is tom in chicago i can tell you their targets uh, have been roughly the same since david and joku came back i think and joku has one more target but he's running a lot more routes uh than than harrison bryant now, I had the, I, I had the opportunity in, in the Scott Fishbowl, which I know I've talked about on this show before, uh, another very deep league, uh, tight end premium on first downs. It's kind of an odd scoring system. But I, I didn't have the opportunity to pick up Njoku, as he was already taken. But I did pick up Harrison Bryant uh, this week, and, and we'll see what happens going forward. And with Hooper having that appendectomy, I mean, he's in danger of missing week eight as well. Uh, so certainly there, there could be some starting potential both this week and next week. Farrell, if I had my druthers, I would lean towards Njoku, um, but I'm not sure, you know, what the ceiling is for any of these guys, given the way that the Browns have been playing and the fact that they still have Odell Beckham, Kareem Hunt, and uh, Jarvis Landry catching passes out there. You're leaning in the right direction, I think, Balky, and I'm going to help push you that way. And Njoku has the resume and he has the history, and he's a player that's been separated Uh, from his football opportunities because of his body letting him down. He had 56 catches back in 2018, and I think he has all the talent in the world. Plus, he's another guy that's asked to be traded, and now he gets his opportunity to play because of the unfortunate situation with Cooper. Uh, He was a first-round draft pick, if I recall, out of Miami. Uh, Harrison Bryant. Uh, came in the mid-round this year. He's a good ball player. He's got all the measurables, the, the triangle measurables that you want from a tight end. Uh, he's a fourth-rounder out of Florida Atlantic. He, uh, you know, I think he's a fine ball player. I think he's a, a rookie player that's just happy to be there and happy to have a job and be because finds himself uh, surprised that he's probably on the field and contributing. And Joku's the way that you need to go here. You know, last we talked about Cleveland. Uh, last week, and we talked about um, Odell Beckham a little bit and we, whether or not we would roster him. And um, I think we gave a very similar answer, and we were diplomatic in that answer. And uh, I turned the, the television on to see the fourth quarter of uh, the Browns' previous game, and I saw Odell Beckham walking around on the sidelines without his shoes on. No matter who you play and who you roster, you really do want to count on them playing four quarters and have their head in the game uh, with with in, with the with uh, Beckham's head wherever it might be, and with the ribs uh, for Landry. I think uh, I, I think there's some some other choices, some other names, some other targets that we're going to see uh, stepping up for Baker Mayfield. God knows somebody needs to in a Cincinnati Bengal game, which they're counting on winning. And Joku might be that guy to deliver for you. Hey, and the guy who delivers on this podcast every week is Farrell Elliott. You follow him on Twitter oh. at Jay Farrell Elliott. 
Follow the Kentucky Fantasy Football State Championship at KFFSC and check it out at KFFSC.com. Remember the uh, Kentucky Fantasy Football State Championship podcast with Farrell, with Rob Fetcher. Uh, You can check that out anywhere you get your podcast as well. It is a must-listen, especially for high-stakes owners, every single week. Farrell, it was a pleasure. You are a gentleman and a scholar. Enjoy Week 7. I hope the balls bounce your way, and we'll talk to you again next week, dude. See you then, Bucky. Farrell Elliott, ladies and gentlemen, uh, awesome, awesome stuff uh, for sure uh, to get his analysis each and every week. You know, it, it, it's, it stinks that we don't have Dave anymore, but what a blessing. Uh, pretty awesome having Farrell on every week, and I know the listeners will agree with me on that one for sure. I want to thank Farrell. I want to thank John Laskowski and Barney Newkirk, the FFPC, Rob Bryce, and, of course, each and every one of you. One thing I did not mention at the top of the show Check out the Road of His High Stakes Slowdown this week. We have Jerry Hooten on. Jerry Hooten is the uncle of Phil Hooten. Together, they won the 2018 FFPC Terminator Championship and the $10,000 that, uh, that went with it. They are expert best ball players. They play a ton of them this, uh, every single year. They've won some of the live events out in Vegas before. Uh, it's rare we get uh, best ball analysis halfway through the season, but it's always fun to touch on that and look at it from a different angle uh, because oftentimes we look at best ball strategy before the start of the season and after the season ends, not really often in the middle. So it's kind of a, a different way to go about it this week. Plus, uh, great start set questions uh, for him and uh, good analysis on what he expects to see going forward as well. So check that out, rotoviz.com slash podcast. And of course, anywhere you get podcasts, it is there as well. We are going to be back, ladies and gentlemen, next week, 10-9 Central, the Week 6 Football Guys Players Championship leaders. Christopher Andres and Alan Martirosian are going to be the guests uh, with uh, Farrell and I, plus Nelson Burbitt from the Dynasty Depot.com. Things are heating up there. Dynasty owners are going to want to pay attention to this. Find out how you can get in. Find out how you can get hooked up, uh, especially if you play FFPC Dynasty. Nelson will tell you all about it. Good luck with these seven, everybody. Certainly appreciate you listening. Your weekend officially This has been now. another episode of the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour, presented by MyFFPC.com. It was brought Broadcast live and heard around the world. Balky and Farrell will be back next week with more analysis, interviews, and advice from guests much smarter than they are. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk with you again next week. Thanks to Frederick the Younger for our outro music uh, for the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour for this portion uh, of the program. Uh, Check out their music at frederickthejounger.com. And don't forget to go on to quiethollers.com where you can check out all the Quiet Hollers music. They did that great pressure song in the intro as well. Thanks so much for listening, everybody. Really appreciate it. Um, you know, it's uh, it's always awesome to continue talking fantasy football with each and every one of you as we get into the thick of the season. Only uh, five weeks left uh, for the uh, to, to try to make your league playoffs uh, to get that golden ticket into the championship round of the FPC and the main event. I hope you get there and uh, certainly appreciate you uh, sticking around for the entire program tonight. Talk to you next week, everybody.